the most common thing appears to be that if you access the uh, basically the, the carpal row, whether you do it through the proximal or the distal carpal row, basically you get into the mid carpal joint anywhere that flows throughout all the carpal bones. <laughs> The, uh, the injection sites and like kind of the angle of insertion for um, the radiocarpal joint and the distal radio ulnar joint. I think for the distal radio ulnar, I remember you have the styloid process of the ulna. You come like proximal to it and then a little lateral and then there should be like kind of a dip and you go just straight in mm -hmm. like that. For I the most part, yeah. And then I don't remember the, um, the radiocarpal one. So, um, <clears throat> so when you're palpating, right? So start on your third metacarpal, palpate back until you feel the depression. What bones are you gonna have in that depression? Uh, capitate. Capitate, and then when you go, and that's in, is that in the proximal or the distal carpal row? Distal. Right. So then when you go a bit further proximal, what do you come up to? Triquitrum? Nope. Lunate. Lunate and scaphoid. scaphoid. Yeah, if you actually come basically from that depression, if you go like a few millimeters towards the thumb, towards, you know, generally where scaphoid is, because scaphoid is mm -hmm. this like, almost like kidney bean mm -hmm. shape, and it comes over like this. Mm -hmm. And so you actually can, in here, get to the scapholunate joint, which is access to the mid-carpal joint, and then you need to go just proximal to that. So you find the depression of the capitate. Yep. You go a little bit um, lateral. You should feel the scaphoid lunate, and then a little well, bit... Well, you have to go proximal to feel... So once you feel the capitate, you have to go proximal to get to the proximal carpal road to feel scaphoid and lunate. Uh-huh. And then you go a touch more proximal. Okay, and then are you... Are you feeling for a depression or? It's it very, kind of it's feel? very, very mild mm -hmm. depression that you'll feel. Like I can feel, I basically can feel it under my thumbnail here. But again, the difference be like the difference in these areas is like this much. Mm -hmm. Like it's everything is so close. Uh, and maybe later, uh, at the end of the day, if we have time, we'll scan a, a wrist under ultrasound so I can show you really how close these joints are in proximity. Um, yeah. Are they uh, somewhat continuous, like the proximal carpal? So if you were to put fluid into the proximal carpal row, would it just stay within that small, tiny joint, or would it spread a little bit? So that's actually a, uh, a, a not well-researched area in terms of anatomy. Mm -hmm. um, and there's uh, um, disagreements on that. Hmm. Um, and, and what I actually think it comes down to is I think it's going to be, uh, like each person is going to have a slight variation, mm -hmm. like even the TFCC, for example, where the ligaments attach and if they split into different bands, like there's a wide variety of, of things that can occur. The, the most common thing appears to be that if you access the, uh, basically the, the carpal row whether you do it through the proximal or the distal carpal row, basically you get into the mid carpal joint anywhere that flows throughout all the carpal bones. Mm. Um, that seems to be the, the most standard. That won't connect with your proximal uh, carpal joint or your radial carpal radio joint. Carpal. It won't obviously with the distal radial ulnar joint. Those are separate compartments. <clears throat> but generally, uh, if you get into the mid carpal joint, which I access through the scaphalunate joint because it's easiest to palpate, um, that is supposed to spread. And we've seen, have you seen Bethel do a wrist under fluoro yet? Mm -hmm. You can, you can see it under fluoro. Mm -hmm. Um, the, uh, if you have enough, uh, ligamentous damage to the wrist, you can actually have a continuation. Like it, it blows out and you'll watch the, uh, the contrast spread flow into the, the radiocarpal joint and yeah, like it okay, becomes okay. A, a cluster or sometimes it doesn't, and we had this uh, on a patient that I had where uh, we went through the scaphalunate joint and it didn't spread over to the medial aspect of the uh, uh, mid-carpal joint. And our, our suspicion is just it's scar tissue that's been right. laid down that then they end up blocking off access to that part of the joint. And so mm. that's one. So I, 
I like um, the uh, ultrasound for injections into the wrist joint, but I think that that's one of the air that and the ankle. I think are areas, especially when you're doing the same thing, right? You're trying to inject the mid tarsal joints. <clears throat> With that, I think fluoro just adds an additional layer to it, so you can make sure you're getting everything. Mm -hmm.